Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem sum of absolute differences in a sorted array. We're given an integer array that is pretty much sorted in increasing order or at least non-decreasing order. And that's going to be very, very important for this problem. So don't be like me and forget the first line of the problem statement. Now, with this input array, our goal is actually to build a, another input array. So let's assume we have something like one, three, five. We want to, for every number in the input, we want to map it to another number. Like we're trying to build this output and we're going to build each item by going like this. What's the difference between one and three? Like what's the absolute difference? It's two. And what's the absolute difference between one and five? It's four. Add those together, we get six. And so we put a six in the output. Same thing here. Difference between three and one, it's two. Difference between three and five, it's also two. So output, we get four. Do the same thing with this guy, five and one, and you'll get two and four, and then the ultimate difference is six. So not super difficult here. At least conceptually, this is pretty simple. We know what we're doing. Now, a sort of naive way to attempt to solve this problem would be to take a shortcut. Like that's what we try to do with these problems. We know if we try to brute force this guy, if we try to, for every number in the input, loop over every other item in the input, and then maybe for this guy, same thing, and then for this, same thing. That's gonna be n squared. So you're gonna try to take a shortcut, and the naive thing would be if we're just taking the sum of differences, why not just pre-compute the total of the input array? And then we can just say like pre-compute it and I think we get one plus three plus five, that's gonna be nine. So keep that nine in mind and then, and then for us to solve the problem, we can do it very easily because we know nine represents the whole array. And if we wanna find the value for this slot here, we first now have to subtract one from it. We're trying to get rid of this. And then we have these leftover elements. But remember from each of these, we also wanted to find the difference. Like from here, let's subtract one. And from here, let's also subtract one because we're not just looking for these numbers. We're looking for the difference between this number and that, this number and that. So now we're going to subtract one again and one again, and we end up with six. That works. And if you try it with this other guy, it also works as well with the five, except in that case, we're going to get nine minus five and then a minus five again and minus five again. And that's going to leave us with negative six. So the absolute value of this is still correct. We got a six here and a six here. Well, this won't work for the middle value because notice, take the difference between this and this. Well, we get three minus one, three and five. Then we get three minus five and that's gonna be a negative two here and a positive two on the other side. This is why if you try to take the whole thing nine and then you do a minus three to get rid of this and then a minus three to take the difference between here and minus three for difference with here as well, you're gonna get a zero. That's not what we were looking for. So this is the naive thing. It doesn't work and the reason is in the case where sometimes this number is greater than some numbers in the array, but it's less than other numbers in the array. So how do we do it? What is the shortcut that we can take? Well, it kind of goes back to the beginning of what I was saying. The input array is sorted in non-decreasing order. What do you think? Where are the numbers that are going to be less than three, less than or equal to three? Probably on this side. Where are the numbers that are greater than or equal to three? Probably on this side. So the easiest way to solve this problem is to keep track of prefix and or postfix sums. And I'll explain the intuition, but if you're wondering, how did I know this is the solution? How do I even know what this is? Like, what, what am I even talking about right now? Well, this is actually exactly why I created this Nikodayo in the Neat Code 150 list, a pretty famous list. If you type in product, you can see there's a problem here called product of array except self. This is a very, very similar problem. If you can solve this problem, you can probably solve the daily problem that we're working on today. And look, this is just a list of 150 questions. If you get through this list, 
you can probably solve a very, very large majority of leak code problems, or at least have a chance. And I'm working on a lot of other stuff on this site, including this basics tabs, got a lot of cool stuff added and always working on more. Okay, back to the problem. What is prefix postfix sums? How are we gonna use it to solve this problem? Well, a prefix sum is pretty simple. For every single prefix in the array, meaning every subarray starting at the beginning, so just the first element, first two elements, first three elements, we're gonna keep track of the left sum. That's basically our prefix sum. And we're also going to have pre-computed the total of the array. So with the total and the left sum in mind, and when we keep track of this left sum, by the way, we're gonna do so as we iterate over the array. So by the time we're at the beginning of the array, left sum is equal to zero. When we get here, we're gonna add this to the left sum. Uh, by the time we get here, we're gonna have added both of these to the left sum. So just keep that in mind. So you can probably guess what we're gonna do from here. Imagine we're here, we're at this three. We know elements on the left side are gonna be less than or equal to three. We know elements on the right side are greater than or equal to three. So what should we do? I think we can take three and do, th like for every value on the left side here, we can go like this, three minus one. And if there were more values here, we'd do three minus whatever that value is. And for values on the right side, we can probably do five minus three. And if there was like a six here, we would do six minus three. This way, we kind of guarantee that all of these are going to be positive or at least zero or positive. And it's pretty easy to calculate the sum this way. You get two, get two, and then we get total is four. Okay. So we know what we're trying to do. Now the question is, how do we do it? How does the idea of prefix postfix sums help? Well, assuming instead of going through individual integers, assume we have something here and it's called like left sum or prefix sum or whatever. Let's call it left sum and then this, let's call it right sum. What do we do? The short answer is we take the left sum, and then let's say there were two elements in the left sum. We would want to say left minus three, and then minus three again, because there's two elements in the left sum. We have to find the difference between every pair, so that's why we're subtracting this many. So basically, however many elements there are in that subarray, the size of the prefix, in other words, is what we're gonna do here. Three, or, or minus three times the size of the left sum. And we're gonna do the same thing on the right side, except in reverse order. We're gonna do three times the size of the right portion. Like just keep in mind that this size is not necessarily the same as this. And from that, we're gonna subtract the right sum. So that's the whole idea. I know it's not super complicated once you know it, but it does take a decent amount of intuition to get here especially if you don't know the basics like prefix sums and postfix sums. But the good thing about this solution is these are like the formulas for every element. We just need to calculate these formulas. We don't need to loop over anything. So time complexity wise, this is pretty efficient. It's big O of N. If you don't count the output as extra space, we can also get this done in constant space. So now let's code this up. Okay, so jumping into the code, the first thing I'm gonna do is just grab the total sum. Well, technically we're computing it by uh, calling sum over the input array nums. And I'm also gonna have a variable to keep track of the left sum, which is initially gonna be zero. And I'm not gonna have one for the right sum because we will uh, derive that from these two fields. Now let's uh, lastly compute the result, which is what we're ultimately going to be returning. So I'll return that out here, but now let's actually get into the code. And of course, we're gonna need to loop over the input. And I'm gonna do that with enumerate in Python because that gives us the index as well as the element. And now we're trying to do something very simple, but sometimes simple things can be the most complicated. So I would encourage you to go slow for this part. Of course, we want to update the left sum every single time, but in this case, we're actually gonna leave this line of code for last because by the time we're at index zero, the left sum should be zero. And by the time we get to index one, that's when the left sum should be updated. So for now, left sum is gonna stay here, but we probably need to compute the right sum as well. Thankfully, that's pretty easy to do. We just take total sum, and I should probably call this right sum just to be consistent. So total sum 
minus the current element n as well as minus the left sum. That's pretty simple. And now all we need to do is calculate the absolute difference and then append it to the result. So I'm going to go ahead and compute that here. But remember how we do it. I'll go through it a couple times. We want to do it by taking the left size, like the number of elements in the left subarray, which is going to be in this case i, and multiply it by the current element. And then from that, we're subtracting the left sum. And to this, we're going to add the other part of that, which was in that case, like the opposite. It's the right sum minus the right size, which is going to be, I believe, length of nums minus i minus one. And this is going to be like this uh, part is also going to be multiplied by n. And that's the entire code. But in case this isn't super readable, I think it's worth refactoring. Uh, let's get a couple variables, a couple helper variables for left size and right size. So let's refactor this part out. So here, I is the left size. So I'm actually going to uh, replace this with left size and then left size is gonna be set to I. Now the right size is just going to be this part. So I'm just going to cut and paste that and put it there. I don't know if this is more easy or harder to read for you. For me, it's about the same, but I think this does make it a bit more like explicit what we are doing. And I think this also makes me realize that I believe the formulas I had in the drawing explanation were probably reversed. I think left sum should have been uh, on the other side of this like equation. And I think it would matter because if you have them swapped, you will probably get negatives in the output. So I guess I keep that in mind. Sorry about that. But this is the entire code. Let's go ahead and run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes, it does. And it's pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.